Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on how to detect wire fraud in real time with machine learning and behavioral analytics. Wendy Zwei and myself will be the speakers of today's session, and we will introduce ourselves. Wendy, please introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Wendy. I'm a senior product manager at Guardian Analytics. Uh, I work on our uh, solutions for digital banking and payment channels. Thank you, Wendy. My name is Eric Tran Lee. I'm the Vice President of Product Management at Guardian Analytics. Some quick housekeeping. Uh, you should keep one Bright Talk session rather open only, otherwise you may have some echo. Uh, you can answer questions in the questions box. We will address them either live and or by email. This webinar is recorded and you will receive a URL link. Please rate and suggest content to improve our webinar series uh, for, for the future. So what does Guardian Analytics do? We are in the business of protecting our customers from fraud and money laundering, and we are leveraging machine learning and behavioral analytics. So what does it mean to detect fraud or money laundering with behavioral analytics? The key principle is that it is a self-learned uh, behavioral analytics, whereby individual activities are being learned uh, uh, continuously with a, a system we detect anomalous user activity that deviates from that baseline. We adapt to new threats, and we don't depend on rules. We monitor 100 events and attributes in real time. A couple of achievements from Guardian Analytics. Uh, what we truly mean business is that we are protecting our customer financial asset. We more than 450 financial institutions uh, we are protecting uh, assets ranging from millions of, uh, in assets to 600 billion in assets in terms of financial institutions. We analyze the behavior of over 40 million commercial and retail account holders and protect over 5 billion in banking activities each year, making us the number one in behavior analytics platform for fraud detection. So what is really happening in the land of wire fraud? And these are the trends we're observing right now. First of all, between January 2015 and December 2016, there was about more than 2,000% increase uh, in fraud, in wire fraud, totaling over $5 billion in exposed losses due mainly to business email compromise, EBC, uh, illicit wire transfer. This gives you the range uh, of uh, wire fraud due to BEC. 74% of the largest financial institution, over 1 billion in assets, rank BEC attacks as number one on wire fraud. And that indicates 91% of them is in the top three. So why detecting wire fraud in real time matters? I'm going to hand it over to Wendy to explain to you. Thank you, Eric. Um, so detecting wire fraud in real time matters because um, if we looking at the uh, fraud detection um, application or solutions on the market, uh, it supports a wide range of capabilities. And if we plot them um, on this two coordinate and two dimensions, uh, where on the x-axis axis is the latency to detect and intervene, and on the y-axis is the layers of protections, we can clearly see that some of them have certain advantage uh, and a disadvantage. So at the lower corner, uh, where the legacy type of uh, rule-based detection, where the evaluation is post-transaction, they are lost reactive and difficult to recover the release of funds because the detection is after the money has left the account, uh, where the type of solution that could do post or pre-transaction detection, but detection only, has an advantage over those post-transaction, but the detection would still uh, require their certain time between the analyst, fraud analyst, and 
uh, maybe the war room to engage and to recover the, uh, the funds. So there's still some latency uh, in the process. Whereas for Guardian Analytics, we can provide a multi-channel real-time detection and an intervention. So we would be able to move our customer from the loss recovery to loss prevention um, by detecting suspicious war requests across multiple channels, especially those initiated from your digital banking channels. Uh, we allow the customer to define risk-based policies to hold, cancel, or release war in real time so that uh, when a suspicious wire transfer is being detected, um, these risk-based policy can automatically uh, intervene on the wire before the money leaves the account. Um, so the benefit of having multi-channel and real-time detection and intervention is that you can move from loss recovery to loss prevention so that it protects your customer uh, as well by uh, reducing the, uh, the losses or the chances where the money leaves the account and having to go through the recovery process. So how does it all work together? Um, let's walk through the process of detect and intervene uh, wire fraud in real time uh, with Guardian Analytics. Uh, so here you can see there's a different stakeholder in place where the fraudster impersonating the legitimate user uh, sending wires, the wire platform, and the Guardian Analytics. So the fraudster would try to send a wire request from different avenues. Uh, it could be sending wire requests from digital banking channel using desktop or mobile devices, or it could also initiate a wire request from the offline channels. When these wire requests get sent to the wire platform, the wire platform with a uh, real-time integration with Guardian Analytics will send the wire details to Guardian Analytics. And we risk to all, every single wire request we receive from the wire platform. Uh, and then we apply the intervention policy on top of it. And as a result, at the real time, we'll be able to display fraud alerts to the fraud analysts in our risk application and simultaneously place any suspicious wire on hold based on the intervention policy that is uh, specified by the customer. So this would give the fraud analyst the time it needs to investigate and document um, the, uh, the, the suspicious wire. Uh, and then based on the investigation or maybe based on validation with you know, their customer using callback, um, they will be able to action on these uh, suspicious wire that was placed on hold by either canceling or release the wire. And this can all be done within Guardian Analytics risk application by click of a button. And when a decision is provided by the fraud analyst, Guardian Analytics will send that uh, decision back to the wire platform. Uh, the wire platform can then process the wire according to those instructions provided by the fraud analyst. So dissecting BEC wire fraud and process detection, in this session, let's take a look at an example of BEC wire fraud. How, they, how does it happen and how the analyst will be able to use Guardian Analytics uh, application for the investigation? First, let's take a look at a real-life example of the DEC wire fraud, the email that's sent to the victim. So the foster, in this example, the foster impersonated the CEO and they sent a spear phishing email to an employee claiming a payment must be made. Um, as you can see, uh, the foster would uh, express some sense of urgency um, or uh, creating a lengthier email to build trust and credibility with the victim. Uh, typically, the fraudster would also spoof the sender's email, and it use a, may use a domain that resembles the target company's actual domain by changing a one letter or adding an additional letter so that it's kind of hard for uh, normal people to catch uh, the differences in the domain because we typically wouldn't really pay attention to it. 
Um, so there's a number of tricks that we'll use in the email to establish uh, certain credibility. And then the process that Froster used to stage the BEC wire fraud uh, can take over a number of hours or maybe a number of days. Uh, you typically start with the Froster identify a target doing extensive research about the company or the uh, appropriate uh, person that they may want to uh, engage uh, the CEC attack. And then once they identify the correct target, usually it will be a person that holds a financial controller position in the company, they send a spear phishing email um, to the victim. Um, if the victim responds to the email, then the fraudster will start engaging with the victim using a number of tricks such as social engineering, try to convince the victim that he is the legitimate uh, executive that they're trying to impersonate. Uh, if the victims then engage with the fraudster in the email exchange or later convinced uh, that the fraudster is who, who he pretends to be, uh, the fraudster will typically send out uh, the instruction for wire payment. And then unfortunately, when the victim uh, falls into the trap and then start initiating the wire transfer, the froster will receive the payment and disappear right away. So how does an analyst can use Guardian Analytics solution to analyze um, the signals and identify um, this type of fraud? Here what you see is a uh, example of a suspicious wire being detected by fraud, uh, by Guardian Analytics uh, visual analytics application. Uh, there's a number of key signals that, that we display to the end uh, the fraud analyst. Um, the, the signals could be the type of wire that's being uh, received, uh, the beneficiary or and the originator information, including their locations the frequency of their transactions, transaction amount, and timing. And there's many more. Um, in this one example, we can see, based on the history of this account holder behavior, there's a deviation from consistent behavior of outbound international wire. The suspicious wire comes in as a outbound domestic wire. So that's automatically a um, uh, elevated risk um, signal. And the other, on the other hand, the beneficiary and originator deviated from the normal beneficiary location. Um, there's some very consistent behavior for this particular account where the location of the beneficiary is typically in Asia, uh, and this time is within the U.S. on the East Coast. Um, so these are strong signals for the elevated risk where the analyst can pay attention and start the investigation by validating whether this is um, uh, the suspicious wire is uh, truly illegitimate or it is a fraud. This is the one example where uh, using the wire details from the wire channel alone that it will be able to um, raise the alert and catch fraud. In the next couple of slides, let's just an example of uh, using multi-channel protection uh, within Guardian Analytics and how that's going to help the fraud analyst. So for multi-channel analysis using Guardian Analytics, the analyst will have the flexibility of using both our wire solution uh, in conjunction with our digital banking solution. So this particular example we're showing here is an example of the BEC fraud detected by Guardian Analytics a wire solution using the wire information provided by the wire platform. Uh, in this one example, the fraud analyst uh, see unusual behavior uh, for the beneficiary, uh, and that's an elevating um, uh, risk signal. Uh, and if the wire platform also provides the source of the wire where it's being initiated, and here in the example, we see the source is an online uh, versus branch, then this is where the analyst can cross-reference the corresponding online session that initiated the wire in Guardian Analytics digital banking solution. So 
So let's take a look at how that looks like. So what you see here is the corresponding online session for the previous wire, suspicious wire that was detected using the wire solution. Um, the online wire submission uh, activity was caught by the digital banking solution here. And then it, it becomes a strong signal for elevated risk because based on the history of this online user behavior, uh, wire submission is a rare activity for this account holder, let alone an international wire as an anomaly. Um, so if the analyst that has been reviewing the online channel alert, this is already one opportunity for them to catch the suspicious um, wire uh, submission uh, and then read the alert to put a hold on the wire. And the compound was the second chance where it can review the wire channel uh, alerts. This is where they can determine this is a fraudulent session, a fraudulent wire transfer, and cancel the wire in time before the money leaves the account. So once the analyst finished their investigation, they would use the case uh, module to document their investigation steps and their results. Um, for Gar Guardian Analytics solution, our case module allows the analyst to create a case and automatic populated key information uh, to help them um, move faster. Uh, the analyst can uh, put any notes during the investigation process to capture the investigation uh, steps and the results, such as callback or any uh, correspondence between the customer and an analyst, and capture the uh, resolution of the case, whether this is a fraud or no fraud, or just uh, suspicious activity. On the other hand, for fraud uh, team managers, they would want to understand your fraud exposure. Uh, we have fraud analytics and fraud cockpit solution product line uh, that provides exactly that. Uh, we have auto box uh, dashboard which allows the fraud, um, uh, fraud operation teams to review the fraud exposure, uh, to look at the cases they investigate, the type of case categories, uh, as well as the fraud team, uh, uh, fraud team producti uh, productivity or workload so that the fraud uh, team manager can distribute the work uh, more um, efficiently and increase the team productivity. And then finally, just to recap, the Guardian Analytics solution is the efficient and future-proof fault detection. Compared to legacy um, or Rubik detection solutions that uh, rely on post-transaction information, we do not require known fraud schemes. We do not require frequent updates on fraud schemes. Uh, we provide the multi-channel fraud detection in real time. And for wire fraud specifically, um, and most importantly, we provide automated in intervention policy to hold, release, or cancel wire in real time. So as a result, we are more uh, effective in stopping the fraud and the save the fraud team time. And with that, I'm going to give back to Eric. Thank you, Wendy. Uh, so um, two last slides. One is learn more. Uh, we have couples of recorded webinars that may be very interesting for you, um, like fighting financial crime in the world of blockchain, same day BCACH, uh, digital banking fraud, and uh, best practice for money laundering. Uh, we have an upcoming webinar, Detecting ACH Payroll Fraud in Real Time, on May 8, 2018, uh, 11 a.m. Pacific Time. And uh, we, will be, uh, we will be at NACHA Payment 2018, uh, actually at the end of this week. It starts next Monday on Booth 2015, 215. Please visit us. Um, please open the Q&A. Uh, session. So let me review the questions we have uh, from the, the live session. 
So we have a couple of logistical questions here. Uh, will this presentation be, be able to be printed out? Uh, the answer is yes. We will send you a URL link from which you can download the slides. Uh, speaker is cutting in and out during the presentation. Uh, we have had those comments, but it's not uniform. So please uh, send us your location. We would like to investigate furthermore. Uh, it seems that in some region or cities, uh, the, the service we have doesn't have the right quality of, of voice. Um, here is a question right on the topic. Is there a danger that the service will flag and impede legitimate wire transfers? Uh, Wendy, you want to take that one? Uh, so, uh, so it's so our solution um, raises the alerts based on the elevated risk signals. Uh, so we do not determine whether certain wire is fraud or not fraud. We leave that decision to the fraud analysts after they use our uh, information to investigate. What we do is raise the flag on suspicious activities or behavior detected, and based on the, the number or degree of anomaly, uh, graded as whether high risk, medium risk, or low risk. And then the, with the intervention policy, we could temporarily place you know, the suspicious wire or the wire with a high risk or medium risk or with any other kind of policy that the customer would like to use to judge on hold and then leave the, the analyst, the, the final decision maker, on whether uh, the wire should be processed uh, or should be canceled. Um, so that gives the flexibility to the financial institution um, to do their own decision making, uh, whereas uh, we we kind of elevate the most suspicious, almost uh, anomaly detected among all of their volumes to help them go through thousands of uh, wire transactions um, um, every day. Good. Thank you, Wendy. I have. Two other questions that are actually uh, somehow related. What is the fast positive rate, how user can manage them, and what is the average hit rate that your client is experiencing today? Uh, so let me start, and then Wendy, please chime in. Uh, it's fully machine learning and behavioral analytics. Uh, so the fast positive rate is very, very low. I mean, it, it, it's certainly not in the 99, 95% uh, that you, you used to have uh, with traditional tools. And it's lower than 5%. Uh, and uh, this can be corroborated with um, uh, customer user experience. Uh, Wendy, you want to add uh, anything to, to this one? Um, yeah, so it, it, like Eric said, the positive positive is very low because of the machine learning, and that's the benefit of it. Um, the, the alert uh, rate can be tailored or adjusted based on the customer's uh, volume or demand, or they can request it for us to take a closer look and attenuate it according to their specific needs. Yes, I think this is where I say the two are, are, are correlated. What is the average heat rate that your client experience today? And my interpretation is the heat rate of alerts uh, as opposed to the fast positive rate. So it, it is. Uh, when we deliver our machine learning models, uh, we, we, we have a default settings uh, that is measured around, uh, across our uh, population of financial institution and within your population, uh, within the enterprise user population itself, as we learn. So it, it really settles to, to have the, the maximum what we call accuracy and sensitivity. So all depending on that, you have a volume of alerts, and that can be configurable uh, if needed to be. It's all a matter of um, strategy and capacity uh, to go about those uh, high-risk alerts. OK. So I have another question. Uh, can you support real-time intervention for any wire platform? Uh, Wendy, you want to take this one? Sure. Um, so we can support real-time integration and intervention with any web platform as long as the web platform is willing to support API-based integration with Guardian Analytics and has the capability of routing the wire transfer based on the return status 
Um, so we have Enterprise API that's available for any wire platform to integrate with. We can also work with the wire platform to um, customize the integration to a certain degree if um, uh, there's any specific uh, requirements with the wire platform. Uh, but it's also rely on the wire platform to have the ability within themselves to route the wire transfer uh, based on what we can return to them. Okay, thank you, Wendy. I have another question that just appeared that is very interesting. Well, how models are managed using your application? Uh, we, financial institution, do we have to manage this? Uh, so let me start the, the answer here. Uh, Guardian Analytics has uh, defined models that we have uh, created, devised, and calibrated uh, for the past 10 years. And we are actually deploying these models uh, across financial institutions, and they are self-learning. Uh, in other words, depending on your population, it will calibrate themselves. Um, you don't have to manage these models uh, at all. I mean, uh, this is the, 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 our business of um, uh, detecting fraud and money laundering using these models. Uh, what you can do, though, is uh, um, depending on uh, the volume of alert, depending on your strategy, we can discuss about uh, the thresholds so that you can uh, either uh, use the default threshold or tune them and or uh, use uh, leverage our fraud desk to um, address the capacity of answering them or addressing them. Uh, you want to add something, Wendy, to the models? Which, uh, uh, no, I think you covered it all. Yeah. Okay. So I have another question, which is, uh, can the software look across different transaction type, wire, ACH, check, to develop the learning rules as they relate to a particular client? Uh, you want to take this one? It, it has to do with multi-channel. Uh, why don't you start with multi-channel, uh, Wendy, and then I will complement the question. Sure. So multi-channel monitoring or protection uh, is to utilize a different um, uh, so fault solution from Guardian Analytics. We have today a uh, fault solution for digital banking channel. We have fault solution for wire channel. We have fault solution for ACH channel. Uh, its solution is tailored to the type of data we can collect from those channels. Um, and we risk score those uh, events from, uh, for each solution independently because the behavior are different. Uh, we, there, there's, in, cer in certain use cases, it makes sense to look across the channels. For example, wire and online is very reasonable to look at uh, the behaviors on the online channel because the wire could be initiated from there uh, and the behavior of the wire channel because the wire is processed there. Um, but on the other hand, there are uh, other type of you know, cross-channel analysis may not um, always make sense, especially with ACH is a batch uh, type of process or type of data uh, where wire and online could be uh, real time. Uh, so, uh, and the most of the customer, based on what we learn from their business process, they do have different teams reviewing or monitoring the thought risk for different channel. Uh, they don't really work uh, across the team. Some do, some don't. Uh, so, the workflow of their business operation also uh, they, uh, dictate that they look at individual channel one at a time. Yes, I think what yeah, I think what is important here is we do multi-channel uh, fraud visualization. Now, the, the reason why it's important to understand there's a difference is there is a strong correlation between online and wire, uh, mobile and wire, online and ACH, mobile and ACH, uh, and, and 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 our model takes into account that. So all the risk factors and risk indicators will correlate uh, in a single in a single thread. Now, when you cross channels, uh, there's, a, there's not forcibly causality. Uh, however, what we do offer is uh, what we call fraud analytics that allows you to, to from a single pane of glass, if you wish, to take a user-centric view and understand 
all the, the fraud or the, 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 um, the alerts that has been impacting one user account. And that would be a 360 view around it that will allow you to do customer risk rating later on. So it's, it's really two, two different end goals. One is fraud detection, how fast can you do it? And, 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 and that is really uh, what multi-channel is about. So if you have a, an online or mobile attack followed by a wire fraud, then it, the system will detect it and will allow you to roll back and look back. Uh, that would be the same case for ACH. Uh, but then when it's not causality uh, probable, then uh, we will give you an analytics view so that you can at least do a, 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 a risk rating on it. I have a last question here. Um, what happens when a wire that is placed on hold but is later released directly from the wire platform before the fraud team can review and make a decision? Pastor Wendy? I can answer that. Um, so the wire platform holds the truth of the source of truth for wire status. Um, if the Guardian Analytics tells the wire platform to place a wire on hold because of a wire policy set in our risk application, and the wire is released directly by the wire room using the wire platform, um, then the wire status will remain um, as hold in Guardian Analytics application. Um, any subsequent actions of the fraud analysts within our application will not have any real impact on the wire status because the wire status and it's really at the end of the day controlled by what the action is taken in the wire platform. Uh, so uh, if you have uh, some business process where the wire uh, room may release the wire without waiting for the analysis from the fraud team, uh, what you can do is ask the wire platform provider to report on you know what wire is falls into the scenario, what wire is being released without uh, having this fraud analysis decision coming from Guardian Analytics. Okay. So thank you, Wendy. I think we have no more questions. So this will end this webinar on detecting wire fraud in real time with machine learning and behavior analytics. Thank you, everyone.